Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. In this video, I will be finally reviewing the Imperial Knights Renegade box set. It's been months and months since it was last out. Um, if you remember, it sort of looked like this in this massive box. Um, all in all, I think you saved about 40% off the of buying like two knights and you got two nice scenery pieces which we'll we'll look at in a in a moment and you got two knights now you got one of the newer knights that has the uh, avenger gatling cannon and the thunderstrike gauntlet and it has uh, sort of three different types of carapace mounted weapons i mean you can have the uh, twin icarus auto cannon which my good friend over here is uh, displaying or you can have the storm spear rocket pod or the iron storm now the you don't get a separate pod um you only get one pod but the you get different sort of um front faces for the pod uh so with a bit of magnetization yes you can magnetize the the front of the missile pod i haven't because i probably will get another um knight at some point uh or other but I just wanted to make that point. Also, you get quite a few battle cannons. Yes, you'll have, you know, two extra battle cannons, I think, in, in total. I just wanted to say straight away that um, this box set, you get the two scenery pieces, you get a rules for a separate sort of a game, you get one of the more expensive knights, and then one of the normal bog standard knights. I don't think you can get this box set anymore. Um, if you see it on, on sites and things, it most likely is uh, that they're just selling sort of old stock. I don't think Games Workshop's doing it anymore. I think when it first came out, it was, I want to guess, at £120, £130, which is just astronomical, really, for, for two uh, Imperial Knights. I think when I got it, I got it for like 90-odd quid, which is like five quid less than a... Sorry about that. I knew there was something missing. His, his shoulder um, armor came off. Um, yeah, so it, I think it was like five pound less than than just a standard than the most expensive knight. So all in all, that was a very good deal, and um, I'd always have suggested people buy the Renegade box set if they were going to buy one knight because you get a second one um, with it and you get some scenery. So uh, if people had held out for that year and a half or so since they released them. Um, then people were going to get a good deal buying two or three um, box sets. You know, you could have bought three box sets for £270 for six nights, um, which is way more than a full full army. And uh, That's quite cheap, really, in my opinion, for, for an army. Yes, it's only six models, um, but that keep you occupied and, and all the rest. So let's have a look at the models themselves. Um, so this is the sort of more expensive knight. I haven't glued on various parts. This is sort of like as far build as I go before I, I kind of start painting. Now this um, uh, Storm Spear missile launcher uh, fully rotates, yeah, 360, um, and it's magnetized with quite a strong magnet actually, I must say. Um, uh, the magnet is inbuilt in there somewhere, and then there's a magnet if I just take this uh, carapace armor off, uh, magnet in there. You don't need to use massive magnets like this. You can use smaller with, with less pull. These are just ones that I had lying around, so I thought I might as well um, make use of them. I think the, uh, the head moves, the melter gun moves, the shield moves too. Um, these uh, armor plates are just removable at the moment. I've got the rest of his uh, gear. Um, just down here all his uh, armor plates and I will just spray them and paint them separate and glue them on um, closer to completion at the moment the arms move up and down and side to side and all the rest of it and that's just because I haven't glued them in place it's up to you if you're spending 80 90 pounds on a single model you might want to have him move about you might want to magnetize uh, the torso so you can move it around in different positions you might want to magnetize the arms and all the rest of it it's completely up to you uh, it's very simple just to ignore this joint here and put a magnet either side and then you can just clip your your different weapons and things on there Likewise, you can put a magnet in there, but it's really up to you. As much as I can, I like to glue my models as, as much as possible. So he will be eventually in a static pose, probably like that or, or something equally as boring. <laughs> uh, and likewise, the gun, it won't be aimed sort of like, like that, sort of probably just, just slung like that, like he's like he's just charged through a building or, or he's about or he's, he's just scanning something, because I've got quite a few knights in sort of firing poses. 
Um, so there you go. That's that's the sort of more expensive knight. You only get one melter gun. You get a fancy um, uh, iron shield thing. You also get like these two variant face plates. Uh, you get the Thunderstrike Gauntlet and you get the um, Avenger Gatling Cannon. So that's sort of like the more expensive knight. Oh, yeah, sorry. You also get one of those extra things. And I think there's a, another mechanic in Type 1. So moving over, let's have a look at the, the standard knight. So this is the standard knight that everyone has uh, known and loved. It's got the Reaper Chain Sword again. It's not magnetised. Uh, this top bit isn't magnetised. All I'm waiting for is I need to put an order in for some magnets. Put a small magnet in there. Glue that shut, and I've already pre-magnetized the carapace, so that will just um, attach on there when ready. So that's the um, twin auto cannon, um, and then I can mix and match and put them on on both of them. It's a shame I glued the carapaces uh, for for the other Imperial Knights because if I hadn't, then I'd definitely just take them off and um, magnetize the sort of exhaust vent type area there, and then I could put these weapons on on any of them. So that's that's another tip. Uh, if you if you are going to get any more knights, you might want to do that and might want to magnetise the top um, top weapons. Yeah, it's just a standard knight. Um, I sort of put him in a firing pose. Um, he might he might sort of be like that, or he might sort of be be like that. Um, I'm still deciding, but yeah, all the the pads and everything, uh, you can just remove them. Um, and everything moves, he's not being sort of glued in place yet. Um, what I like to do is sort of get to this stage and then what I'll do is I'll normally just spray this black and then I'll spray it silver, uh, well lead belcher. I used to spray it black and then pan paint it lead belcher but when they brought out the uh, the lead belcher spray just saves so much time. It's quicker too. Uh, I think that letting that spray dry in 10 minutes or so is, is quicker than actually once you've painted it all by brush, so much quicker. So there we go. That's that's just a bit of a, a showcase for for the two night models. There we go. So we'll just move them out of the way slightly, and we'll just show you the the two buildings. You get um, a little scenery set with the box. Um, this is what they are. So you can make two sort of small buildings. That's probably mainly medium almost. But yeah, you get two small buildings. You can build them like this. Um, very straightforward, easy to, to build. Then after they've dried, you just need to spray them uh, and paint them. It's just a shame that GW don't make the sort of textured um, spray anymore. Uh, I really like that spray. I've used that on my other buildings and it just gives a layer of depth and when you're dry brushing your um, shabti bone and things, the, you know, to, to pick out the highlights and things, um, it just catches those little abrasions. Um, but ne nevertheless, um, you're still going to get some detail on these these buildings, whether you have them as, as metal or stone or, or whatever. So I think that's quite cool that you get them as like a sort of extra. Uh, speaking of extras, you get two dice, <laughs> so um, and that's for the, the actual rule set, which we'll just talk about. So you get these data sheets, and what you kind of got to do is sort of split your knights into um, chaos and then imperial. So the imperial knight has got the battle cannon, the reaper chain sword, and the twin auto cannon. I don't really know if that's going to do much um but likewise you've got the iron storm um pod for the for the chaos one but the chaos one you've got the reaper chain sword and you've got the thunderstrike gauntlet so you you've got two close combat weapons as opposed to one with the the imperial one you've got different points for different parts of the uh knight and you've got different sort of damage rules as well so you've got like heavy stubbers 18 inches and iron saw missile pods 36 but damage is d3 ap nothing and um, then you've got a different sort of critical damage table so it's very far removed from warhammer 40k um except for the names of the weapons themselves but you've got a nice little damage chart there for them for this particular game set and likewise here exactly the same um you'd sort of expect that anyway but there you go, that's those two sort of data sheets. And then in here, um, you've got quite a large explanation of them. You've got some different phases. Uh, you, you've got preparing. You've got a plan phase where you secretly choose a number of actions. Then you have an execute phase, a move action, attacking action, uh, armor saves and damage, 
target obscured, rotate iron shield action. So it, it just breaks it up into lots of little parts. And then you've got a few missions like you've got um, search and secure, uh, breakthrough, jewel of honor. And then it gives you this uh, data sheet for the litany of destruction, you know, the, the renegade knight, which is just here, which would obviously be for chaos. Um, one sort of glaringly obvious thing is that he comes with a reaper chainsword and thunderstrike gauntlet but you can give him a thermal cannon and then you can also give him another another thermal cannon and likewise with a rapid fire battle cannon you can have two and you can have two avenger gatling cannons so to have two battle cannons seems like a an extra that sort of chaos can get and there's his points and everything so all of his like little rules um so there you go, that's sort of like the, the extra sort of bits and things. I'd probably hazard the guess uh, that um, people buying this set would be buying it for the two Imperial Knights to boost their Imperial Knight army or just to get a couple of Knights for their existing Imperial army. I think the people that are buying it for the, the Renegade Knight um, is quite small and I'd probably say people buying it for the, for the actual game um, is quite a small proportion as well and that's just what happens with these these sets that you have multiple models of where you're saving 40 percent that that sort of saving is very difficult to ignore that's it for me and my review i think it's a cracking set if it does come out again and they re-release it like they've just re-released the storm cloud stuff definitely try and pick it up because it saves you so much on um getting two nights individually uh, even though they're both not the, the more expensive one because they're absolutely fantastic models, pleasure to build and paint and um, they're really great centrepieces if you've just got like a small marine force or an imperial guard force or something like that. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.